So very good morning to everyone. And also good afternoon. So is my AV is okay? Can you see my this one? Good afternoon. Is it AV is okay? Okay, thank you, Abhishek and Sushumna. Okay, let us uh, continue the class. So, because after a long gap, almost uh, last Friday, I've taken your class. So, just in order to give glimpses so what we have done last time so we are studying about uh, the optimal uh, scheduling of hydrothermal system so hydro power plant operating cost is almost zero for thermal as yes, operating cost will exist so therefore even in optimal scheduling of hydrothermal system, we are going to minimize the cost of production due to thermal power plant only. Understood? So we are going to minimize the cost of generation by thermal generation only. We are not going to consider the cost with respect to hydropower plant. Why? Because operational cost is almost zero. So the main source is water, which is available at free of cost. However, in while minimizing this cost of uh, thermal generation, it has to undergo or satisfy some of the constraints. So those constraints already we have seen it earlier is what are the constraints? Power balance equation we have seen it earlier because we have added hydro also into the combination of thermal system. So because we have added hydro, hydro, so we are going to get an additional constraint in addition to the power balance equation. What is the power balance equation? Total generation minus loss minus demand, load demand is equal to zero. Or you can say that total generation is equal to load plus total load plus total losses. This is your power balance equation. So in addition to this power balance equation, we will have hydropower plant constraints. So that is due to your water constraint. So those constraints, we have seen it and we have studied just uh, to refresh your these things. So we are going, I'm going to show you quickly. So therefore you see that one. So how to form mathematical formulation of hydrothermal system. So for a certain period, of operation T. T means it is a period. So it may be considered as one day or one week or month or a year. Okay. Okay, sorry for the disturbance. Okay. <coughs> so that's what we are doing it. We are maybe considering for a period. So if you are considering for a day or one week, it is known as short term. Then if you are considering for a month or year, it is called as long term uh, planning. There is not planning, it is a scheduling. So therefore, we have to make some assumptions in order to form mathematical formulation. So that is what is the water storage in the reservoir at the beginning of a period, at the beginning of a period and at the end of the period is assumed to be known or specified. Also, the water inflow water into the reservoir after accounting the irrigation purpose, the load demand on the system 
should be known. That means it is completely certainty. So that is it is a deterministic case we are going to consider. So therefore, the problem is to determine the discharge. I have explained it. Discharge water discharge rate is Q of t as to minimize this cost. So because we are minimizing the cost over a period of time. So that's why we are taking integral from zero to t. So c dash is the cost of your thermal generation only. You see here, this is the equation we are having it. Okay. So subjected to the constraints. So what are the constraints we are having it? So one is power balance equation. This is your power balance equation. So this is the real power generation due to thermal, and this is the real power generation due to hydro. This is your total generation. pgt plus pgh over a time interval of t minus losses minus demand is equal to 0 this is your power balance equation over a interval of time t below that is uh, from 0 to capital t that's what i said this is 0 to 24 hours or 0 to 30 days or 0 to 1 year or 0 to 7 days a week etc so this is a cost function and this is your Uh, equality is so that power power balance equation. In addition to this one, so we are going to get additional constraints. So what are those ad additional constraints? I told the water availability in the uh, uh, reservoir. So in that for that one water availability equation, I given it, isn't it? What is J is inflow of water into the reservoir. What is Q? It is the uh, rate at which the water is getting discharged. from the river sorry from the uh, reservoir that means we through the penstock we will be using this water force to rotate the turbines then after that one the water is getting discharged after uh, striking the turbines isn't it that is rate of discharge q so we have to find out what is this rate of discharge to minimize your cost of thermal generation Okay, for that one, I explained this equation. What is this x dash of t? What is x dash of t? Is your the storage at the end of the period? At the end of the period t. And what is x dash of zero? Is the storage initially? That means starting of the period. So starting of the period, the end of the period. So then this is your rate of that sorry inflow of water. This is rate of discharge. i have explained it with the block uh, isn't it so once again for your reference uh, because that is required so you consider this is your reservoir so this is your inflow water so that is j okay then what you are having it so this is zeroth interval and this is t interval okay at zeroth interval the availability of water is say x zero okay then at the end of the period the water level gets reduced obviously isn't it so because of ev evaporation or seepage etc and all those things or we may might have used it so this is your xt understood and this is your rate of discharge that is q okay so therefore x of t this x of t is equal to that is x of t Is equal to what about initial storage plus inflow is the total water available in your reservoir, isn't it? So that is x not. Sorry, x not. I should show it here. Okay, forget about this one. X not plus inflow minus the discharge, isn't it? That is Q. So therefore, when you are taking these terms onto the electric side, you see x dash. You forget about this dash. X T minus X zero minus J term minus minus we are taking on to other side it will become plus of Q. Hope you understood this one. Clear. Now with that equation, this is your water equation, water availability equation. But here rate of inflow and uh, uh, discharge rate we are considering over a period of time. so therefore we are taking integration of 0 to t hope you understood this is the water availability equation so then all these things i have explained it isn't it 
so is a function of hydro generation and this hydro generation is a function of your storage and discharge understood so what is the power generated by your hydro power plant is a function of your storage your storage and your discharge understood so these constraints you should remember it the problem can be handled conveniently by discretization nowadays everything is uh, discretized isn't it earlier they will be using it uh, manually and the linear variation they will be doing it but now everything is computer oriented so it will be discretized so it can be handled conveniently discretization how we are going to discretize so the optimization interval t whatever total period is there divide that one into m sub intervals m number of sub intervals and each sub interval time length will be delta t fear okay now during each sub interval it is assumed that all the variables remains fixed in value understood so 0 to t that means you consider one week 0 to 7 days so this 0 to 7 days you divide that one into first day second day third day sub intervals understood so first day means 0 to 24 hours second day means again to next to 24 no 24.01 seconds to next to 20 48 hours so like that so the time length will be delta t here so during each sub interval it is assumed that variable values are fixed now the problem now is with the digitization with the discretization so what you are going to do this is the cost and you are divided the total period 1 to m sub intervals and we have to add all the sub intervals isn't it you are divided total period into sub intervals so if you want to get all total value at the end so you have to add up all those things so therefore summation and this cost function must be multiplied with your time length obviously you know this is the cost function for this time length over for with respect to variable q what is variable q rate of discharge q power m means it is a m interval at m interval that means m is varied from 1 to m that means what is the cost what is the cost during first sub interval what is the cost during second sub interval etc you have to find out finally you have to add all these things so this is your this thing now what you are going to do so we are going to uh, take delta t into c dash and we are going to represent a new constant as c so that means we are absorbing delta t into c dash so is replaced with c here the same equation so now what is this one is your discretized objective function remember that one the earlier objective function was a linear one so that which we have shown it isn't it now here we are showing this objective function as a discretized objective function now obviously we should get the discretized constraints isn't it so what are the discretized constraints you should get power balance equation and what are availability equation we should get it in discretized manner that means for each sub interval what is the power balance equation similarly what is the water availability equation after discretizing so those equations so here we are having it so just uh, subjected to power balance equation same thing only thing is i given m here understood so m means it is pgt what is pgt is the real power generation real power generation by thermal power, power power plant at mth interval mth sub interval what is plm is a total transmission loss during mth interval what is pd it is a load demand at mth interval so this is your discretized power balance equation call that as equation 2 okay so all those things i told that one now what is transmission loss formula we have assumed the two plants no one is thermal one is hydro in the example so therefore you will be getting a quadratic equation this i have explained it for two plants how you are going to get a loss formula isn't it so last class i told one term was missing now i have added up here pgt was missing so now i have added up here okay next coming back to water continuity equation isn't it so water continuity equation is x dash m minus x dash of m minus m1 because you are divided into sub intervals so therefore we are not taking initial and final earlier we have taken initial and final so that's why x of 0 we have taken x of t we have taken it but instead of 0 and t we have to take a sub interval 
so that means m is your final uh, mth interval and it is previous interval is x minus x of minus m minus 1 isn't it this is your previous interval that is this is nothing but your x of 0 this is nothing but your x of t capital t understood but here we have discretized so that's why we have taken the final value and my the, this one will be it is a previous value of your storage what is the storage in the reservoir in the previous interval that is m minus 1th interval and obviously j is your inflow rate to the power of m means it is at mth interval so this j must be multiplied obviously it is a variable isn't it so q is also a variable so therefore it should be multiplied with your time limit delta t i think from here i have to start i think till last slide i have completed in the last class fine okay now i will go slowly now water continuity equation hope you understood here in this one same equation whatever with the block i have shown it so let me show it once again for better understanding so this is your reservoir so this is your j okay so then this is the interval this is the interval starting interval so that's why i am representing this is x m minus 1 and this is the final interval so that is at mth interval at mth interval the previous interval will be m minus 1 understood so if you want to find out at m minus 1th interval what is the previous interval m minus 2 so like that it should go so this is your q so q at mth interval j at mth interval because this is j and q we are calculating for a sub interval so obviously for each interval this inflow isn't it whatever the inflow is there at uh, so now it is 1145 what is the inflow and if you can see the inflow at 12 sorry 1245 now at 1 pm inflow will be different so therefore even discharge is also different so therefore this must be multiplied with delta t because here this is we are calculating it for sub interval clear so for that purpose so we have written this equation this is your water continuity equation discretized water continuity equation Now you can see x dash m is water storage at the end of the mth interval that's what i said q m is a water discharge at mth interval already i have explained all these things now again the above equation also can be written as in this fashion you can see this one so x of m x dash of m minus that means what this delta t i am going to represent that one in discharging units i am going to consider this delta t in terms of discharging units so in order to represent that one in discharging units divide this through equation throughout with delta t so when you divide this equation with delta t this becomes x dash m by delta t i will show you so this becomes x dash m by delta t isn't it this becomes x dash m by delta t so this x dash m delta t is replaced with your xm is replaced with your xm clear hope you understood this one divide this equation throughout with delta t in order to represent this discharge in terms of discharging units so what is this will becomes x dash of m minus 1 divided by delta t isn't it so this equation is replaced by x of m minus 1 this is absorbed where x of minus uh, m minus 1 is equal to x dash of m minus 1 by delta t that means we are representing this one in discharging units and here it becomes jm and here it becomes qm because we are dividing this one throughout with your delta t hope you understood this one okay now what happens so this i told m is varied from 1 to 3 and already i have explained this is storage in discharge unit that's what i am telling it so where xm is your storage in discharging units now hydro generation in any sub interval so what is the hydro generation during each sub interval can be represented is equal to so hydro power generation is equal to it is average head 
So please uh, remember this one, how to represent the hydro generation in any sub interval. So that is equal to average head into discharge. So discharge means what? You should not consider the other discharges which are happening due to wastage. That is, uh, what is the wastage which is uh, happening there? So seepage will be there in the dams or pen stocks, etc. Leakage will be there. All those things we should not consider that as a discharge. So only the useful water discharge we have to consider. That means the water which is going to strike the turbine and makes the turbine to rotate. So that discharge only we have to consider. Understood? So is equal to hydropower generation is equal to average head into discharge. So now what is this average head? That means here you see PGH means it is hydropower real power generation at mth interval is equal to this is your average head. This is your average head. If you want the proof of this one, it is available. However, at this juncture, it is not required. So still, if you want to know how this average head has been obtained, so you can refer the textbooks, it has been given it. So just it is a, like a, this one. And what is the discharge we are writing it? So what is the discharge? Q, rate of discharge at mth interval minus rho. This is your rho. Now what is rho? That we will see it here. Now this is your equation 4. Clear? So equation 3 is your water continuity equation. And equation 4 is the hydropower generation. We are expressing it in each sub-interval. Hope you understood this one. So now here xm plus xm minus 1. We are having it. So let us see that one how we got this one. Now you see what is E is the water head correction factor. E is your water head correction factor to account for head variation with the storage. Obviously, no. The head will vary in a reservoir. So obviously, the head will vary in the storage that is in the reservoir. So therefore, for that correction factor, we have to consider when you are calculating the average head. That is, is your E, is average, that is water head correction you have to consider. Clear? Now you see H0 is your basic water head. H0 is your basic water head. So what is that uh, basic uh, water head means? Suppose uh, uh, you see this is a dam, you are having it. And this is a pen stock. Isn't it? So, and this is the powerhouse, you are having it. You know this one, hydropower, isn't it? So, from here to here, whatever is there is your base head, H0. This is your H0. Is it clear? Okay. That is your head now. H0 is your base head. So, where rho is, what is rho? Non-effective discharge. We have to consider. So first we have considered useful discharge, but we have to account the non-useful water flow also. That is non-effective discharge. That is the non-effective discharge, water discharge needed is getting discharged to run hydro generator at no load, isn't it? First you have to use the non-effective discharge. That means under no load, first you have to run the hydro generator. So that is non-effective discharge. Why it is called non-effective? Because under no load you, are to do, you have to operate. So it is not connected to load. Also CPH, etc. All those things will be included in your row value. Is it clear? So that is your discharge. So that's what I said, the equation which I have shown it. This is your equation 4 I have shown. No? This is your average head and this is your discharge. So what is discharge? The rate is at m minus rho. What is rho? Non-effective discharge you have to subtract from the useful discharge. Understood? So now it is, you see, storage varies. If storage varies, convert into head units E. This storage will vary, isn't it? Xm plus Xm minus 1 will vary. Convert this one into head units E and take average. 0.5 means it is 1 by 2. Take average of that one and add 1. And that is multiplied with your base head. That is base water head. That is how you are going to get average water head here. 
into discharge head clear so that is your equation 4 so what we are having it power balance equation we are having it water continuity equation we are having it this is the fourth equation that is power generation by hydro power plants during any sub interval is given by this one average head into multiplied with your discharge rate in the above problem formulation it is convenient to choose water discharge in all sub intervals except one as independent variables please try to understand this statement so now we got the formulation problem formulation what is the problem formulation we are defined objective function in discretized mode and we have represented the constraints power balance equation water continuity then the power generation by hydro power plant at mth interval this is your problem formulation objective function subjected to these three constraints fine in this formulation now we have to consider water discharge water discharge each so now see i said if you consider for a week if you divide that week into sub intervals that means first day second day third day etc so first day is your first sub interval second day is second sub interval like that so first day what is the discharge second day what is the discharge third day what is the discharge understood so this discharge water discharge in all the sub intervals that means all the seven sub intervals i have taken a week all the seven sub six sub intervals because 1 to 2 Two to three, three to four, four to five, five to six, six to seven. So there are six sub intervals there in a week. So out of these six sub intervals, so all the six sub intervals, so water discharge is represented by Q. Water discharge is represented by Q. So let us consider water discharge during first sub interval. That is first day is Q one. water discharge during second sub interval that is second day is q2 similarly q3 q4 q5 q6 okay q1 to q6 are the water discharges during the sub intervals over a period of one week now out of this q1 to q7 six all these variables q1 to q6 we are going to consider it as a independent variables we are going to consider it as an independent variables except one variable except one variable means how many queues we are having it over a period of one week six queues are there discharges q1 q2 q3 q4 q5 q6 over a period of one week divided into sub intervals so these are the discharges during each sub interval that means each day so this q1 to q6 all except one variable all other discharges water discharge variables are considered as independent variables that means how many independent variables are there five independent variables there are q6 isn't it for a week period i have taken as an example there are Six Q six is there. So out of six variables, except one, the remaining variables are your independent variables. That is, five variables are your independent variables, and one is your dependent variable. Hope you understood this statement. In the above problem, it is convenient to choose water discharge in all sub intervals except one. That means all are independent variables except one is not. independent variable it is dependent variable <laughs> now hydro generation thermal generation and water storage in all sub intervals are treated as dependent variables see here see now you have to identify what are the independent variables what are the dependent variables understood so while hydro generation thermal generation that is pgt pgh and water storage what is water storage variable x Understood. Water storage variable is x. In all the sub intervals, we are going to treat it as a dependent variables. However, water discharge Q during each sub intervals, we are going to consider it as a independent variables, except one variable. 
that is an important point understood so these two statements are very important you should keep it in mind now the fact is that the water discharge in one of the sub intervals is a dependent variable isn't it this is what we said as per this statement of as per this statement so the water discharge variables is one will be dependent variable so i said q1 to q6 so out from q out of q1 to q6 one variable will be dependent variable remaining five variables of discharge of water will be your independent variables isn't it so this is a statement derived from this statement other way of representing this statement that means one variable will be dependent variable you see here clear are you following it see here this is your dependent variable this i have derived it from this one so that that means it is discharge this is also for q this is also for q but here five variables are independent and one variable will be your dependent variable understood and these are your dependent variables obviously what is that one thermal hydro generations and storage x now let us see here so this is already there now this is the water availability equation already I told this one we have discussed several times isn't it so but here water availability this is discretized so what is xm this is a at final interval where m is 1 to m m is your final sub interval that is seventh day isn't it at seventh day what is the storage minus as per the equation already i have explained how this water continuity or water availability equation we got x of 0 that means initial interval zeroth interval minus your j what is this minus uh, j here what is minus j here is your inflow of water and why we are using it summation because this is discretized this water inflow is different for different sub intervals so total water flow if you want you have to add up all the sub intervals so that's why this summation similarly discharge also we have to find out for each sub interval is equal to 0 this is equation 5 clear so this is the water discharge in sub interval we are having it now because of this equation only m minus 1 equation can be specified independently see this one this statement and this one if there are m sub intervals then there are m minus 1 equation will be independent and one v equation will be dependent variable so using this equation you can represent m minus 1 equations as an independent variables clear now the remaining one can then be determined from this equation and is therefore a dependent variable understood so that means the one variable what we have specified is determined from this equation that is your dependent variable any doubt till this point okay now this already have explained you see this one for a convenience q1 is chosen as a dependent variable of q1 to q6 i said no so i out of 6 qs i am taking one first one that is q1 as an dependent variable remaining are your independent variables then for q1 how we are going to get using this equation that is dependent variable using this equation so q for q1 what is the discharge is equal to x not minus xm plus this one so that means what you can see here from this equation so minus x not you see here same equation i am having it here isn't it i am taking out to rhs side only thing is this is the discharge equation this is a discharge equation is equal to zero is there isn't it so when i am taking this terms on to the right hand side and i am equating that one to q1 so i am going to get this equation from that equation only during mth interval and be careful here we are considering the discharge q is one is dependent variable but here when you are writing the equation for q it should start from 2 to m be careful here earlier just we are represented m 
just if you represent m means m is varied from 1 to capital m understood so if you want to specify particular limits then m is equal to 2 to m because when m is equal to 1 we have taken it as an dependent variable it is not independent variable suppose you assume it you have taken fourth variable as a dependent variable that is q4 q4 then how we are going to write q4 is equal to same equation but here limit you can vary it m is varied from 1 to m okay then what we should write can anyone tell i am considering out of q1 to q6 q4 as a dependent variable one variable now what i should write it in this summation discharge only i am not going to represent j because we are not considering the rate of inflow what is q it is rate of discharge so that's why we have to make changes in q only can anyone tell if q4 is my dependent variable among q among the existing six variables of q so what changes i should make it in this q equation can anyone tell can anyone tell what changes i should make it q4 is my dependent variable q1 q2 q3 q4 q5 q6 all this q6 out of 6 one variable i am going to consider as a dependent remaining variables are independent variables so that one dependent variable now i am considering it as q4 now when i am choosing q4 as dependent variable what variation you have to make it in this equation i have explained it here when q1 is chosen as a depend variable now this rate as per the earlier equation this q limits will change from 2 to m because one is considered as dependent variable that we are not going to include it in this equation now i am considering fourth variable fourth variable of q as a dependent variable so how to write this term that's what i am asking anyone Hmm. limits will be 4 to 6 yeah that means you have not understood you have not understood i have taken a week i have taken a week so just i will show you example here once again so this is summation only that term i am taking it q power m isn't it so m is divided into 1 to capital m number of sub intervals okay now when i am considering so over a week i am having it q1 to q7 q1 to q7 sorry q6 each sub interval isn't it so out of these six variables five variables will be dependent variables independent variables and any one variable among this q1 to q6 will be dependent variable example q1 if i am considering it as a dependent variable then that equation as per the previous equation now i am going to change this one this equation m is varied from 2 to m not from 1 to m why because 1 when m is equal to 1 that we have considered as a, as a dependent variable so therefore that we are now whichever the variable uh, index whichever the sub interval index which we have considered as a dependent variable that we are not going to include it in this summation so therefore it varies from 2 to m clear suppose if i am taking q4 instead of q1 q4 i am taking it as a dependent variable still remaining five variables what are the remaining five variables q1 q2 q3 q5 q6 are your independent variables so for those independent variables how to represent this equation so is the same equation only thing is variation you can observe it here so how to write it in this equation this is the my question so 1 2 3 and 5 to 6 that's what 
answer is almost the right sushumna 1 2 3 and 5 to 6 but how to represent it here so therefore for q4 for q4 this limit i am going to represent it summation m is equal to 1 2 capital m with q power m only this time i am telling other terms remain same that means this is a equation and one more thing i am going to write where m is not equal to 4 that's a simple because q4 is we are considering as a dependent variable that dependent variable don't include it here so therefore we are getting independent equations independent variables q1 q2 q4 whatever the variable you assume it i have understood this is how you are going to write and you are given 1 to 3 and 5 to 6 it is that is not the way and you have to write another term another summation if you are representing that limit otherwise technically this is how 1 to m but m is not equal to 4 why it is not equal to 4 because 4 we have considered it as an dependent variable clear hope you understood this one okay you understood now this equation so this is the explanation for the statements which we have considered what is the time 13 10 now what is the solution to technique for this one understood so let us see this uh, solution technique in the next class for this hydro power thermal station so please whatever i said it's uh, it is available in dp kothari modern power system analysis please go through that one so first before discretization model is there and after discretization what is the model so what is power balance equation what is water continuity equation what is the power generation due to hydro power plant during each sub interval what are dependent variables independent variables so you should know those things so in the competitive examinations they will be asking this mcqs based on this one so this solution technique i will be continuing it in the next class till this point if you have any doubts you can ask me and anyway tuesday onwards maybe it may be a physical class we don't know we'll see that one any doubts are there okay if you don't have any doubts then it's okay so i'm going to end the class